Happy Independence Day, Sri Lanka! It was on the 4th of February 1948 that D.S. Senanayaka, the father of the nation, negotiated self-rule for the then Ceylon from the British Empire. But of course, before the British, there were the Portuguese and the Dutch, who all left an indelible imprint on the history of this land. Welcome to Prime Group Kaleidoscope with me, Savitri Rodrigo. As we celebrate independence, it's also time to reflect about financial independence for women. DFCC Aloka is a savings account that believes strongly in empowering women to gain that independence. Advising me on strategies for success, like a mentor. Supporting me every step of the way, like a sister. DFCC Aloka is a financial solution designed to empower females. Kaleidoscope with Savitri Rodrigo is on multiple digital channels. Do subscribe or follow us. Welcome to 88 Residence Kathadua. Invest just 3 million and own your dream home. Pay 25% in two and a half years, 55% at the handover with zero interest. Prices starting from 14.5 million. 0710 88 Residence Prime Group. Welcome to a quick look at the week that was on Snapshot. Sri Lanka's inflation rate in January became Asia's highest at 14.2%. Year on year, the world is experiencing high inflation as well and this will lead to global growth slowing to around 4.3% in 2022. 2022 should also see the Sri Lanka rupee depreciating further and if allowed to free float, the exchange rate may reach 250 rupees to 260 rupees to the US dollar by December. Goal is to get a facelift with 40 hectares being reclaimed from the sea with an investment of 175 million US dollars needed to complete the new look city. The world's oldest ever tortoise, Jonathan, who lived through 39 US presidencies, seven British monarchs and two world wars, turned 190. Although he could even be 200, who's to know? Welcome to our news capsule. Globally, banks have been booking large amounts of debt. Of the 300 trillion US dollars of global debt, 180 trillion US dollars is attributed to debt accumulated by the banking sector. Taking a look at the sustainability of this debt, acting country manager of the IFC Sri Lanka and the Maldives, Victor Antonipele, said a banker's responsibility is to manage risk and one must be able to identify those risks. This means that all stakeholders in the industry must act more responsibly. If that's the case, Victor, what needs to be done? First step towards achieving this is to understand the need and the market we operate in. We need to move away from a supply-driven culture towards a demand-driven culture. A demand-driven culture will resonate well with the market and surely will help manage risks better. To keep abreast with the constantly evolving world around us, and to be relevant to the market, we must establish nimble systems that create the ability of an organization to spontaneously respond to changes in the market and customer demands. Technology is a useful tool in doing so. As technology challenges traditional banking business models and transforms it, the trends to watch out for in the future are artificial intelligence and machine learning, adoption of application programming interfaces or APIs, blockchain technologies, innovative regulations such as PDS2, and mergers and acquisition of traditional FIs and disruptors. Victor, how big a threat is climate change to the banking industry? Agility of banks, in my view, will be tested heavily in the climate business area as it will be the single most important risk to manage in time to come. We should create a banking industry that is agile, that is responsible, that adopts technology 
and that identifies and supports opportunities to mitigate environmental and social risks to fuel a resilient growth in the future as we strive to build back better post-COVID-19. Transparency International, which assessed the top 75 companies listed on the Colombo Stock Exchange, stated that listed companies in Sri Lanka were moderately transparent in corporate reporting, averaging 6.93 on a scale of 10. John Keel's Holdings, Commercial Bank and Dialogue recorded the highest scores. And in news from the Colombo Stock Exchange, this week the All Share Price Index moved down by 0.45%, while the daily turnover averaged 7.6 billion rupees. WTI oil hit a seven-year high to around 88 US dollars per barrel after OPEC Plus continued to moderate output increases. Gold prices moved slightly above the 1,800 US dollars per ounce level this week. Selling for Life's annual report for 2020 was selected among the 10 best integrated reports by the Chartered Certified Management Accountants. Selling for Life also took its stakeholder engagement further with an art and essay competition for children, launched for the 15th Life Insurance Week on the theme, Your Dream When You Grow Up, to create awareness on the importance of life insurance. A real-life princess trotted down the runway when Chanel showcased its latest collection at Eau Couture Week in Paris. Princess Charlotte, the equestrian niece of Monaco's Prince Albert, emerged in a sequin jacket atop a horse, circled the room and cantered off. Welcome to 88 Residence Kathadua. Invest just 3 million and own your dream home. Pay 25% in two and a half years, 55% at the handover with zero interest. Prizes starting from 14.5 million. 0710 888 Residence Prime Group. Kaleidoscope is gifting 12 speed reading programs for free, one each month, to a value of 20,000 rupees or 347 US dollars. Conducted by Sanjeev Jayaratnam, you can learn to speed read from anywhere in the world because it's conducted digitally. Is send us a message on any of our platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram or LinkedIn, that you're interested in learning to speed read. World of risks and obstacles, we are there to help you reach your goals. With 12 billion rupees worth of customer benefits in 2020 and a life insurance fund worth over 100 billion rupees, our strength is your strength. You focus on your goals, we will take care of the risks. Selenko Life. With Sri Lanka celebrating 74 years of independence, it may be good for us to take a step back and reflect on whether the country has really progressed after independence. We've been through a war and insurgencies, bombs and carnage, and the biggest protracted conflict of nearly 30 years has left this country embraced in a negative peace, the absence of overt violence. There's social unrest resulting from COVID-19 and the economic fallout. Into this equation steps in a peace and reconciliation activist, Sara Kabir, who has embarked on a documentary to create awareness and understanding of Sri Lanka's post-independence history, The Journey of a Democracy, The Sri Lankan Story. So I caught up with Sara in our studio to find out more. Sara, good to have you on the show. Welcome back. Thank you for having me again. This documentary, I think, is going to be a handful for you. Um, what was the key reason that made you actually delve into Sri Lanka's post-independence history? So I think it's two interconnected sort of reasons. One is um, working on reconciliation and sort of seeing the repetitions of the same sort of cycles of violence even in the post-war era and also discriminatory policies and realizing that this was largely because a lot of us don't have an understanding of our post-independence history and so we're kind of okay with seeing the same mistakes happening and this ties into the other reason um, our history curriculum really leaves all of this out in the education in at the school level and I felt that you know if it's not being done at the national level at least to try and do something I mean there's a lot of academic work being done I have to say but very little does, do mainstream people engage in those debates so I thought of trying to do something if it's not being done at the macro level. So what has been the process of actually putting it together very briefly? Uh, in a nutshell, uh, I think in 2016, I sort of started imagining this idea and sort of daydreaming about it. 2020, just before COVID happened, I met with Raw Media about a smaller video 
happened to discuss this with them and they really liked it and we sort of decided to collaborate and that was the beginning of the project. The biggest sort of defining process of that pro of the project I would say is liaising with about 40 or 50 different academics, um, having continuous chats with them, getting their readings and sort of immersing myself in it. It was pretty much, I can relate this to like doing a master's. It was like just studying Sri Lanka's post-independence history. And from there, I mean, it's what really sort of outline, gave the outline of this project. And now we are in production, the fun part, doing the field work. Um, I should say we've got Udan Fernando as well, who's collaborating with us now, who's helping with the scripting part of the project as well. So you mentioned over 40 academics, experts, civil society members that you're interviewing. What has been your key finding in these conversations with them? I think that uh, history is not black and white, that uh, it really comes down to interpretation. Um, if I wanted to prove a point that I wanted to today, I could use a bit of history and someone else could prove a completely different point with that same bit of history. So one of the biggest learnings I had from this was to really be open-minded when you're looking into looking back at our past read as much as you can on a particular topic and also try to understand where the writer comes from, like their stand, their position, because all of that goes into the writing of history. So yeah, that, you know, it's very down to interpretation, it's very great. <laughs> now, running parallel to your documentary, you are also going to have a website with uh, some 50 interviewees, uh, clips on that website. Uh, what was the objective of actually having that website and putting these interviewees the clips on that? So the website actually will have longer cuts of the interviewees plus additional interviewees to those who are in the documentary. And the documentary is only a one and a half hour to two hour maximum. So the website will actually sort of dive deeper into the topics because we don't have much space in the documentary as much as we'd like to. So I think the website is for a different sort of audience, for people who are like research students, you know, civil society, people who are already engaged in these topics. So it's a few layers beneath the documentary. So what is your end objective in this whole exercise? Non-recurrence. So I feel like um, we tend to keep making the same mistakes even in the post-war era. And I feel if we have an understanding of our history, there's more of knowledge when we're forging a better sort of future for Sri Lanka. You, you need to know where you come from as a nation to really be able to understand where you want to go. So that's one of it. And I have to say, I mean, this is a stretch, but maybe put some pressure to change the history curriculum at the school level. Thank you, Sarah. I just hope your end objective is met. <laughs> I hope so too. Knowing where we come from is one way to learn from our mistakes and by making a change in our history curriculum a priority, we might be taking a step in the right direction. We of course live in hope. On Life in 60 Today is the Xena warrior, a woman who realized that some skills were not taught to her simply because she was a woman, but these were essential for her independence. Here's Nadini Pereira with the nuts and bolts of the Xena project. Xena project was inspired by my own experiences, Shidi, and my desire to always empower women and to inspire them. I wanted to provide an avenue for the ladies to learn skills that are typically passed down and taught to men either by their fathers or from school. Uh, we basically want to provide the skills that the ladies will need to be more independent. So we will be providing classes on basic electronics, basic car maintenance, carpentry, masonry, plumbing, how to do a little tiling, grouting around the house and to mix a little cement for small repairs. So we'll be starting classes on basic car maintenance very soon. In the immediate future, I hope to take this program to companies that have invested in their ladies already with the empowerment programs um, and to girls schools uh, for the A-level classes so that they can be more prepared for the world and to uh, driving classes, driving schools so that the ladies can take this basic car maintenance course before they step out on the road with their license. And as we celebrate independence, keep our kaleidoscope takeaway in mind. We must be free, not because we claim freedom, but because we practice it. William Faulkner.